Today we're talking high steer arms and upper ball joint eliminators. Welcome back for another episode of Off-Road Hub. My name is Ken and today I am going to be attempting to install these high steer arms onto these Ford Super Duty Dana 60 steering knuckles. Um, these are from TMR. They're made of quarter inch steel. They come unwelded. I have a bolt just holding them together right now just for convenience sake. Um, they are form fit so I shouldn't have to alter them too much and they are specific to left and right. Um, these ones are for, for an 09 to a 2016. My steering knuckles came off of a 2013. For the upper ball joint eliminators, I have these from Busted Knuckle Off-Road. They have a, a brass bushing in there. Uh, should be a lot stronger than your standard Super Duty upper ball joint. So. Hopefully they don't give me too much trouble to get them installed. These probably won't, but uh, these arms, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. So when you order these high steer arms from TMR, this is what they send you. Uh, the top and the bottom of the arms and that part. And then this one inch grade eight bolt uh, with this spacer that you'll understand why you need. And also uh, a giant lock nut for the giant bolt. Uh, the things that you'll need to get are some high misalignment spacers, a three quarter inch bolt, and then uh, some washers and another nut, maybe another lock nut or a lock washer. But they send you this and then you need to get a few more things. The heist your arm comes with these nice little tabs, so it isn't too difficult to put together. It just fits together uh, like a puzzle, like an easy puzzle. So there you go. That's basically how it goes together. And that's how it's going to go onto the steering knuckle. And then you got your three quarter bolts going to go through there with your high misalignment spacers for your tie rod. And then your giant one inch bolt goes through here and goes down uh, through the the stock location of the tie rod. So you'll see. So for the upper ball joint eliminators, this is your upper ball joint hole right here. And so they send you this, which is a giant bushing, and that's gonna get pressed into here. You can't do it by hand. And then this right here has this brass bushing, which will be in the axle, uh, the C on the axle. This goes through here. There's a giant Allen head right there. So when this is in here, this actually takes the place of the ball joint. And then this will screw into there from the axle. And what you end up with is just something that's basically unbreakable, unlike a ball joint. So, I guess I'll start by installing this upper ball joint eliminator. It looks like it needs to be pressed in because it's not just falling in there. <laughs> so, we'll see if this works. Alright guys, well I was trying to get this ball joint eliminator uh, bushing, I guess you'd call it, into the top of the knuckle, and it wasn't going. Not at all. I tried to press it in, and uh, I ended up screwing up this one. It got crooked, and I was trying to straighten it out, and... Uh, but being crooked wasn't the problem, I don't think. It would just... It just doesn't fit in this in this hole. So... I had to order a new one from uh, Busted Knuckle Off-Road and they sent me another one for free. And then I took it over to my local machine shop and they, I had them trim uh, five thousandths, just a tiny bit, off of uh, the two that I have now. So hopefully 
I can get them in to these knuckles. I even put them in the freezer to try to shrink them a little bit. So maybe that'll help. I don't know. Let's find out. All right, I've got my shaved and frozen part. Um, and according to Busted Knuckle, it should just pound in here with a little tap from a hammer. Alright, that took uh, quite quite a little tapping, I would say, with my, uh, I don't know, four pound dead blow, but it made it. So, now I'll just have to weld it in there. There, I think it's in there. Alright, let's see if the next one works. All right, we got them both in there. So shave, shaving them five thousandths and freezing them seem to work. These one inch bolts have to go through the old uh, tie rod hole and these are one inch in diameter. So it's time to drill it out to an inch. That's a big drill. There we go. One down. And number two. These are big holes to drill. Let me tell you, this uh, this half inch drill with this big bit, it can uh, it can really grab you for sure. If it gets a little crooked, it'll jerk you pretty hard. And number two is done. I think the hole in this one was actually bigger. The hole was actually larger to begin with on this side because it drilled a lot faster. Now even drilled out to an inch, you can see that there's plenty of uh, meat, so to speak, left on these knuckles. They're pretty beefy, so no concerns about thinning out the metal too much there. All right, so I put the one inch bolt through there. Now we can just line this up, and it lines up pretty well. There's a pretty large gap right there, um, but they line up pretty well on the top and the bottom. There's not really any gap there. And then there's a casting thing right in here. That seems to be interfering a little bit, so I think I'm going to uh, shave that down just a hair. Maybe that'll help out a little bit, but overall it uh, fits pretty well. This uh, piece of tubing in here, this is what TMR provides. This is a eighth inch wall DOM and I've got some quarter inch so I might as well just upgrade that. So I cut a piece of that off and put it in here because quarter inch is always better, right? So smoothing out this little nubbin, that's what we'll call it, uh, that improved actually the fit quite a bit. So I can't see quite as much daylight under there anymore. So that worked out really well. All right, let's see how this other side fits.
All right, this side actually looks pretty, pretty darn good. Not too bad. Again, a little bit of a gap over on this corner, but I think I'm just gonna shave off the same little nubbin <laughs> as I did on the other side. And uh, I think that'll help just a tiny bit. That does look a little bit better. Actually, that looks a ton better. With just a little bit of smoothing out this surface right here. There was a little kind of a uh, ridge right here. Got rid of that. And uh, yeah, that looks, that looks really good. Pretty happy about that. All right, I think they uh, they look pretty good. We're uh, pretty much just, just about ready to weld these up. I'm gonna clean up some of this mill scale and, um, and then bolt everything down snugly, but not too tightly because I don't wanna weld anything under stress uh, because that's bad from what I understand. Um, and then I've got a special way to heat these up. You're gonna like. All right, I got the uh, some of this mill scale cleaned up on these so I can get some nice clean welds, hopefully. I've got these high misalignment spacers in here and these bolts are all snugged down, um, but I put these spacers in here so that when I weld it, I don't lose the proper gap because when you weld things, sometimes they like to warp in or out. So this way, I'm gonna maintain the proper gap for um, the tie rod end. So these knuckles are made of cast steel, uh, which is obviously different than cast iron. But since it's cast and it's really thick material, I'm gonna preheat these knuckles uh, before I weld on them, just to get uh, better penetration, I think, and to help the welds not crack when I'm done. So I'm gonna heat them up and then slowly cool them down after they're welded. And the way that I'm gonna do this is baking them in an oven, of course. All right, these guys have been baking for quite a while now at 500 degrees. So I'll take one out, go weld it, put it back in the oven, take the other one out, weld that, put it back in the oven, and then do a nice slow cool down. They got a little flash of rust in that gas oven. I don't think it's too big a deal, but take a second to wire brush a little bit off. Here's the second one. The first one is back in the oven. So I've had the knuckles in the oven now at 500 degrees post weld for some post heat to kind of even out all the heat. And now I'm gonna turn off the oven and let them sit in there and slowly cool down. 
And here they are, all welded up. Let's see the upper ball joint eliminator there. Everything looks pretty good. And here they are on the other side. The uh, high misalignment spacers and everything all in place, so nothing should have uh, changed sizes on me. And I'll be able to fit my tie rods in there, no problem. So, pretty happy with that. Well, there you have it, TMR uh, high steer arms welded on to uh, Super Duty Dana 60 steering knuckles and the busted knuckle ball joint eliminators. Uh, pretty simple procedures. The uh, ball joint eliminators from Busted Knuckle, those uh, from Busted Knuckle, I, I don't know how they get those to fit. Again, I haven't had them shaved down and froze them to try to shrink them a little bit more and then they just barely pounded in. So um, they said they don't have any problem with them, but I, you know, all knuckles are a little bit different and regular ball joints come with a little uh, kind of an edge on them that's soft so they pound in easier. So ah, no big deal. The TMR uh, steering arms, I think they'll function great. This big one inch bolt that goes through the factory tie rod location um, definitely adds a lot of strength. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed already, do that so you can catch new content and follow this FJ Cruiser solid axle swap build uh, every Monday and Thursday. And we'll see you next time.